I think it's fair to say it's been extremely intense. In March, when this was all started, and we were looking at China and Italy and Spain, and we thought, well, if this is going to happen in London, we better be prepared. But we didn't know exactly what to prepare for. So it was a very, very intense and scary period where we had to generate loads of capacity, reorganize all the hospitals. Um, staff, of course, was anxious what was going to happen to them and how we, were able, we would be able to protect them. And then in April and later on in May, a lot of patients came our way. Um, so we had a lot of very sick people in the hospital. I did a lot of clinical work myself. Uh, I was also coordinating the uh, hospital and ITU search for all the hospitals in the northern part of London and the central part of London. That was actually causing the most intensity. It's a feeling of responsibility and also uncertainty uh, because I was not sure that, that we would be able to generate sufficient capacity. Now in June and July we're in a different type of activity because most of the coronavirus has gone, we do not have that many patients anymore in the hospital, but now we have to get everything back on the rails, which is really difficult and it's a big puzzle. We are very keen to do research and to do innovation, but that's actually what saved us. Since there were not enough respirators, teams from the university and, and from engineers from outside the university and hospital people worked together and we designed our own uh, uh, ventilator. So I think this was another demonstration that innovation and research is crucial for healthcare. The impact on regular healthcare has been massive. We stopped many things because we needed the capacity to address coronavirus patients. Also a lot of patients did not want to go to hospital anymore, uh, even when they had serious complaints because they were afraid for the virus. But also, if you talk to patients, they, they, they were telling me that they didn't want to be separated from their, from their family members. We now see that a lot of patients actually have died or had serious health problems, not directly related to coronavirus, but indirectly related to coronavirus. There have been many unexpected surprises. So, for example, we try now already for years to have less face-to-face -face appointments in the outpatient uh, department and to do much more telephone or video conferences with patients. But suddenly we had to do it. And overnight we switched from less than 5% of these encounters to more than 95%. And suddenly all the physicians who were always a little bit resistant to those changes said, well, this is actually working very well and I'm not going to change back. UCLH is, a, is an extremely international hospital. After all these years, I think they've, they've become a little bit used to this Dutch CEO who does not wear a tie and who rides a bicycle and is working in the hospital. And the UK people accept directness from me because I'm Dutch. The Dutch academics in the UK are a very variable group. It's, it, it goes from junior researchers um, master students to, you know, professors or directors of institutes. So it's very nice to have a network so everybody can learn from each other and I think it can only be of benefit.